Well, you know, in our business, we're not supposed to root for people, uh, but when you have such high regard for them and they go into difficult situations and they kick butt and flourish, it's impossible not to. Brian Dable won Coach of the Year. I've said it multiple times on this show. There was no second place. What he did with the Giants is one of the great coaching jobs I've ever seen in my life. Brian Dable's nice enough. He's a busy guy. He's got Giant repping the Giants right now in an SUV. And I appreciate, Brian, you stopping by. You know, you went into that job, Brian, and there's a, lo there's a lot of things to deal with. What was your first order of business to get it right, Coach? Hey, Colin. First of all, thanks for having me on the show. Um, sorry if this thing's moving up and down. We're, we're driving to the airport here. Uh, you know, I think the first thing was, you know, just sit down with Joe and, you know, map out a plan. The first thing that we had to do and I had to do was was hire a staff. And, you know, I, I, I've said it last night. I'll say it again. You're only as good as the people that you're around. And with the staff that we hired, uh, felt very confident in them. And then ultimately it's a player's game. And you know, those guys did a good job of coaching pushing them up and, and certainly we brought in the right kind of guys uh, that were, you know, tough, smart, dependable, that did the right thing, that were good teammates and, um, you know, very thankful that I got a chance to be around those guys and work with them. Brian, when did you know in the process, um, maybe it's a drive home, a drive to work, but you really felt we've turned a corner, we got buy-in, uh, you're seeing things at practice because it was off a bad year. Did you give me the time you sensed you turned a little bit of a corner with the culture. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I think you try to create that, Colin, in, in April and May with the, with the OTAs, and we had full buy-in, uh, full participation. Thought the guys enjoyed coming to work, uh, getting to know one another, and then once training camp hit, the preseason games, and then obviously after that first game, um, you know, where we went for two there and, you know, it was a decision that I had to make, but I made it with the help of a lot of other people. Um, you know, those guys got a little bit of juice and, you know, we just took it one week at a time and you know got off to a strong start. What was amazing about Daniel Jones to me in the second half of the season, Brian, I could literally see physically he had more confidence. You could see he felt, we talked about it on the show, he looked bigger. He played bigger. Go back to the early conversations with Daniel Jones. He'd been beaten up. It hadn't been good. The press is on him. A lot of losses. How did you convince him, kid, you got something here. We're going to make it work. What were those like? Yeah, we had good conversations. I'd have him over the house. Uh, I, I remember right at the end of training camp, uh, we were going through things and experiment with a lot of different plays. Look, I don't think you could just take a playbook and, you know, here's your playbook and put it into another team. I think you got to, you know, find out what you have. And, you know, that took a little bit of time. I wanted him to have some ownership in it. He'd come over to the house and sit back by the pool, smoke a few cigars. We'd lay out about three or four playbooks, go through some plays that maybe he had run in the past, that, that I've run in the past, and try to put together some things that we felt comfortable with, both him and I and, and Kafka and, and Shea Tierney. And um, it was kind of a work in progress. And then we got a couple guys, um, you know, off the wire. We got a guy like Isaiah Hodgins that was familiar with the system. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he just gets a little bit more confidence each and every week. You played the Eagles more than once. <laughs> you played them a lot. When you face the Eagles, what is the one thing you better not do? What is Kansas City in for? What is the one thing that you, you found to be all three games a real struggle? Uh, we got behind early in every game. And, you know, give credit to their coaching staff. Nick's a, a fantastic coach along with the guys on the staff. And they got some really tremendous players and, you know, they just execute really well early at part of the game. And we're down 21 nothing, 19 nothing in, in the playoff game, 28 nothing, And uh, they got some hard guys to block up front. And you get behind in, in a game against these guys, uh, it's, it's very challenging. Brian, you go into year two. You got to a playoff game. Now everybody's got big expectations, but there's still some roster holes. How do you make sure the young players understand? Guys, this is step one. Okay, half the teams that make the yeah. playoffs, Brian, you know this, don't make it the next year. Exactly right. Well, how exactly do you? Right. How do you? What's the first address of the team going into camp? Yeah, well, I mean, every year is a new year. Um, you know, I've been fortunate to be part of some good teams that finished up with the trophy, and really, one year has nothing to do with the next year. You, the big thing you have to do, Colin, is it's always different. You have different players every year. Uh, sometimes you have different coaches, and you have to build. 
your team from the ground up, really starting in, in April and May and build that chemistry. So, um, you know, we'll have a long way to go. I think, you know, each year you do. Um, unfortunately, you can't just pick up the team chemistry that you had from a previous year and start off the next year. So we have a lot of work to do. There's, you know, a lot of work to do from now until to when we go ahead and, and get to OTAs, let alone the season. So, um, you know, I think we have – the guys that will, will be around, I think there's a level of humility that you have to have. You're, this is a very humbling business, and take it one day at a time. Brian Dable, NFL Coach of the Year, slam dunk, one of the most remarkable turnarounds in a year. He changed culture. He changed the offense, a believability in his system, and an easy guy to root for. Way to go. Way to go, man. Congrats. It all kicks off Super Bowl Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.